welcome to the April 2018 Alliance of Independent Authors Advanced Self-Publishing Salon with me, Joanna Penn, and Orna Ross. Hi, Orna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, everyone. Our title is a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> but here we are again. <laughs> And this week, um, our topic, or this month, our topic is the creative and business mindset, which we are going to get to shortly. But first, we're going to do some updates because as ever, Orna and I are writers first, talkers second, would you believe it? <laughs> so Orna, what have you been up to? I, I actually, I know a little of what you've been up to because I have actual physical books. Up here oh. that we've been talking about for so long. So I'm very excited. So tell us what has been happening. Well, yes, uh, anyone who's a regular listener knows about my saga and um, my Go Creative saga. So anyway, we are off and those books are essentially one. One is a giveaway and the other is a starter pack uh, workbook. But launching book one at London Book Fair already well on with book two. And so um, that's really exciting um, from the Orna Ross side of things. And it also allows me to finish a book about self-publishing, which I have been holding for a very long time because of the third part of that book is all about running an author business. And I, I had a lot of thinking about how creatives actually apply the creative process to business and um, while I had lots of disparate thoughts about it, it took me a long time to get it uh, really and look at what are the conditions that come together when somebody goes from doing their craft work to actually applying creative skills to being, an, a, as I think of it, an entrepreneur as well as um, a crafter and a director, the creative director of the business. So knowing what it is to create assets and um, knowing what it is to to create good processes, tools, techniques, all that sort of stuff. So that's what this series is about. And it is off. Yeah, which is great. And uh, so we've talked before about sort of starting energy, the following through energy and this finishing energy, which is so different, isn't it? With the different stages of the project. And uh, so how how is it? Because you've been stuck in the kind of middle energy for quite a long, not stuck, you have been going through it. Oh, so plowing what's through. The, yeah, what's the yeah. change? What's the change in energy like, I guess, when you know that you are coming towards the end? I'm having a ball, I have to say. I am so happy right now <laughs> because I, it has been, you, see, you use the word stuck, and I was stuck in the sense that you feel stuck, you're not. Mm -hmm. The subconscious is doing its thing, and if you stay, uh, you know, I do. I have done this often enough now that I know if, if I stay connected to the project and I do what I think of as the right things, something clears and you find that you were waiting for something to happen either in your life or your work or something that feeds into the book and so on and so forth and you know I'll never be the kind of writer that just writes very I'm, I'm waiting for that gift of a book that everybody talks about that just comes you write it and out it goes no I think it's, it's a lie that's just a it, lie <laughs> well it's a struggle for me always uh, you know there is that point of where you feel like um as I said I did feel a, a bit stuck and it was like plowing through treacle on occasions but you just stay there and you do what needs doing and you never know what's a good day and what's a bad day really until you get the hindsight and so now though I'm having this amazing feeling because there are nine different books, which makes it sound huge. It's not as big as it sounds. And there's there are short books, most of them, and they're very interconnected. But it's like running up and down a piano scale is kind of how I feel. I'm doing a bit up here and a bit down here, but I can see it all coming together. And it's such a great feeling um, right now. So I'm probably, you know, on a bit of a high. It's probably not as great as I think it is, but I'm enjoying this time, I can tell you. So, uh, um, yeah. That's brilliant. And yeah. Other uh, other projects are coming in finishing as well. So I have a poetry book coming together as well as the self publishing book. So, yeah, great times. So let's talk about what's happening next because we have one of the big um, sort of points in the publishing calendar, which is the London Book Fair. Big stuff happening. What's happening at London Book Fair? Well, it's always big for Ally. It's our birthday. We were born at London Book Fair. We launched there six years ago. So, um, but this year is super exciting for us because for the first time, uh, thanks to a few of our partner members, um, namely Publish Drive, Publica, 
and a little help from Books Go Social, we have actually managed to get some space. And London Book Fair has been very generous to us as well in giving us, uh, a, a, you know, more space than we being a nonprofit and 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 um, as I say, being generous to us. So yes, we have an ally stand. We are going to be at. Um, a, oh, I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. <laughs> uh, we've got E140. Which... That's it. E140. I was going to say A140. E140. Yes, thank you. Um, so we will be there and you will be there and giving one-to-one consultations for which thank you very much. And we have other advisors who will be there giving uh, consultations. Publica and Publish Drive will be there talking about their services and various other people will be there. And there'll be lots of things happening. We have a triple book launch going on. I'll be doing a signing um, and free giveaway of the first book, um, the book I'm launching there. And that's just on our stand. Then we'll be doing the usual seminars in Author HQ. And uh, we have an inside seminar going on as well. So lots and lots. And of course, our party, which I hope as many people who are in London or around London, you don't have to go to the book fair to come to the party. It's in the Hand and Flower on Thursday, the 12th. Mm. And so it's all there on the website at selfpublishingadvice.com and uh, invitations are going out to the members probably as we speak. Yeah. So it's I think it's going to be great for us to have that physical space uh, for indie authors in particular, because a book fair can feel like, why am I here? And you can be wandering around kind of a bit aimlessly sometimes in between. You know, the seminars are generally good at London in comparison to other fairs, but it's it'll be nice for people to have that hub, I think, and be able to, to come up. So we want to see as many people who are, please don't be shy, come and say hi and uh, come and ask your questions. We'll also have a member showcase where our members but we'll be displaying our members books over the three days. And we'll also be we have invited a number of rights professionals and buyers to come and um, look at the books and so on. And we've had um, a number of positive responses to that so far. So, yeah. So but for those people who can't attend London Book Fair, obviously most people won't be able to attend. There's also an online conference, isn't there? So tell us about that. Yeah, we always do um, this. So as well as the live events at the particular wherever we are and it's changing this year, we always bring that event to everybody else uh, all over the world. And, and, you know, we know that people also come. We have members coming from Australia to attend on the book fair. So it works both ways. But um, we traditionally our name was Indie Author Fringe and uh, we ran a 24 hour conference with 24 sessions from top indies and interesting um, advisors and uh, talking about all aspects of of self-publishing. So we're keeping the format. It is essentially because that really does work very well. It's 24 hours so that it's always live to you wherever you are in the world. There will be some live sessions. You can catch up at your leisure. It's all free thanks to the generosity of our speakers and our sponsors. And and that will be as it always has been, except we've changed our name. So I just became increasingly uncomfortable with the word fringe Mm. because people felt it was, you know, while uh, when we adopted it, I think it was a it was a step forward from what it had been called previously, which was Indie Recon, which people didn't really understand what that was. Everybody understood that we were kind of a fringe event and liked the indie kind of feel of that. But it began to feel more and more like we were saying, hey, we're on the margins, whereas now we really feel we're at the cutting edge. So dropped all that and we just brought it into line with our self-publishing advice centre. This will be the self-publishing advice conference and we're, we will also have there our self-publishing advice Quarterly, which is our new member magazine, and that member magazine will be going out to other um, author organisations all around the world as well. So the Self-Publishing Advice Conference, it's on the 14th, it kicks off at 10 a.m. in uh, London time on Saturday the 14th, and will run for 24 hours. And we'll be covering, again, we used to theme it, we used to do kind of um, making the book, selling the book and running an indie author business but actually we're going to put all three themes into both conferences this time so it will uh, we won't be specializing it out really exciting lineup and if you want to check it out it's on selfpublishingadviceconference.com 
Fantastic. And that is the 14th of April, 2018, depending on when you're... <laughs> yeah, you know, you just said the 14th, which could be oh. any 14th. Um, but that uh, that will stay up. So the, the sessions are always available. Obviously, all of the video and audio stuff people can get later. So if you don't make it live, just go check it out. Okay, so um, news segment. Uh, I feel like the news at the moment is pretty much dominated by big data, particularly Facebook, but also the new email regulations coming in, GDPR, the data protection rules coming in around email marketing and permissions for data. So just in case people haven't seen it, uh, the Facebook, um, issues with Cambridge Analytica, which was a company that basically got access to multi-millions of records. I think it was hundreds of millions of records and were able to potentially influence big things like elections and certainly manipulate human behavior. And so lots of changes potentially coming with more regulation of social and a lot of backlash. So what are your thoughts on what's going on with the, the big data news? Well, I think, you know, it's to try and keep keep our focus on what's most relevant to authors. I mean, you can obviously it's outrageous what's go, what's been going on. And I personally have, uh, you know, I, I have feel disappointed with the way Internet 2.0 went in terms of these very large um they're being called by siren servers, which I think is a very good way to describe them. You know, the sirens in the Greek mythology attracted the sailors to their their doom. And I think we are being attracted in and giving away what has value, essentially. Data has value. Information has value. And I think as authors, we have more than anybody in the whole, you know, in the human race, we need to understand the value of our data and the value of our intellectual property, because on that, our living rests. So if we don't believe in it, then who's going to believe in it? Who's going to uphold it? So it's we see this as very key to everything that we kind of stand for and and really important things are being discussed now here. So it's like it's the usual thing when there, when something awful happens it's actually a huge opportunity for us to look at, at what's going on we're going to have a session um, on the self-publishing advice conference mark dawson is going to talk to us about what the changes that facebook mean for authors it, and partly a little bit around that but knowing mark i don't think it will it will really be about that very much it'll be much more about the other changes that are happening to your Facebook page and, you know, how you need to spend money now in order to get reach and, you know, all the different ways in which the algorithm keeps changing and what you need to stay abreast of as an author in, in order to keep in contact with your people and as well as managing the whole advertising side of it, which I know is a huge challenge for for a lot of people. I mean, then, you know, the whole delete Facebook, you know, that movement, I think, I think it's extremely difficult the way we have set up our businesses as authors, even if you wanted to do that as a, you know, as a political gesture or whatever. I think the way in which we are set up on Facebook, I mean, the Alliance runs a, uh, our forum is run on Facebook and alone, you know, to, to begin to even think about dismantling that and how many people would actually transfer over from that on, if we had a private, you know, Alliance run forum, there's nothing to stop us technically doing that. It would be very, very easy, but, um, you know, the actual use of it. So I think there are huge issues for us to think about as authors in terms of how we use not just uh, Facebook, but Amazon, Apple, all of these siren servers, how they have managed their business models absolutely brilliantly and how we're managing ours maybe not so brilliantly. And, uh, I, you know, we need to start thinking about our own websites, self-publishing 3.0, as far as we're concerned, is all about direct selling to from author to reader. This is the new move that we want to support and put, you know, juice behind, because essentially independence is not independence when you're dependent. And, you know, being dependent on Facebook or Amazon or whoever is no better in inverted commas than being dependent on a publisher. So it's it's about the need to think about what independence means to you and in no way being prescriptive about what people should or shouldn't do and completely understanding that these are gray areas and difficult to kind of make decisions even but certainly we should be thinking and talking about it in that way and i'm not 
hearing uh, uh, you know that kind of depth conversation as much as as we'd like to so um yeah that's a conversation that we'll be having for the next three months will be all around self-publishing 3.0 hmm. well I, I do have some prescriptive uh you know oh. thoughts <laughs> well first of all like you know I'm not not coming off Facebook but what I did do was go into the security and you can download um your archive so you can actually have a look at what Facebook have on you which is entirely what you've done on the platform but it's very interesting um, and it will also help you if you do ads on Facebook because if you're advertising to people like you it will give you some more um, touch points for your ads so actually that's that is a scary but be useful so go do that super useful yeah obviously review your security settings uh, with, you know on all of these platforms you're you know ha just be a bit aware of that um and then i think in terms of the the kind of ethical author thing it is being very transparent like the gdpr email regulation that's coming in look at your privacy policy if you have an author website and you are gathering emails if you have a you know giving away books for um for emails you need to look at your privacy policy, make sure it's updated with some of these rules. And really, I think we need to also take responsibility. You know, if you use the Facebook pixel on your website, which I do, which pretty much everyone does, um, then we need to, you know, make sure that is completely transparent. So for me, I'm really going through everything. I mean, I think I have done everything I could do, but now I'm going back through trying to make things much more plain, I guess, plain English. Because, you know, who really reads privacy policies? <laughs> Nobody reads privacy policies. And, and sorry, in terms of prescriptive, mm. I was talking about Facebook. There's no choice but to be prescriptive here around this um, around these regulations because they mm. are going to be law. And yes, it's hard to enforce them, but, but they're also they're, they're just right. It's exactly. just fair, it's and right particularly around affiliate marketing mm. uh, as well. You know, it's um, and that I think is a challenge for people making it very clear when something is actually an affiliate sale and when it is and there's no problem with that but often you don't want to clog your email up with the same kind of verbiage each yeah. time so yeah challenges there for us all too yeah definitely but good challenges because hopefully it will make um emails and social better in every way and it's a bit like when the you know the eu cookie law came in and we all had to put the thing on our websites it wasn't such a big deal in the end so i think the message is you know review everything think about how you want to be treated and treat other people in that way um avoid things like you know mass author giveaways and things which i think are dodgy in terms of this um gdpr um yeah and yeah get on with it <laughs> and we will have um we are preparing an a, a paper on these regulations on what they mean and translating it into plain english and we should have that within a few weeks and that'll be there for download um by our members and others Great. And then we did just have a news item on audio. We talk about audio all the time. <laughs> But um, the New York Times has a new audiobooks chart. Uh, Smashwords has now, is now doing uh, audiobooks with Findaway Voices, same company as draft to digital And uh, you mentioned here this Pew Research report saying one in five uh, in America, so one in five Americans now listen to audiobooks. So it's a good time to start thinking about audio. Uh, Findaway is a, is a great company and there are a couple of others in our um, partner lineup and uh, you know it's an expensive investment and probably not something to leap into straight away if you've just done your first ebook or whatever but there comes a time where audio um, I mean I dabbled in audio a couple of years ago and gave it up because it was too much like hard work and I just didn't feel core at the time but so much is happening and when readership is exploding like that it's it makes life a little bit easier one of the sessions we'll have on the fringe actually is how to market audio because you market it quite differently and mm. um, and you can't hear enough about that i think so um, i'm interested myself to hear what will come out of that session mm. well certainly on audio i just want to add on that that i personally have stopped doing fiction audio because it's so expensive and very hard to compete but i am doing all non-fiction books in audio because 
I have a podcast, so I have a, a marketing platform, but also I find non-fiction audio listeners are less sensitive to length. So unless you have a really long fiction book, um, it can be hard. And most indies write shorter fiction. So if you have a longer than eight hours book for um, fiction, then you're probably fine. But if it's five hours, it's difficult. I found anyway. So and also because someone emailed me the other day and they said they were finding it hard to afford to do audio and I said look if you're not making enough money from your ebooks that you can afford to to pay out for it then don't do it you're not it's not the time so just a caution there um okay so we need to get on to the topic of the day which is the creative and business mindset so what you've been obviously focusing this and you've got lots of books on it but let's distill it down what do you mean by this <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's such an easy question <laughs> well, okay well let's make it more personal how have you because you you write poetry you write literary fiction you have come out of you know academia you've been involved in the publishing world uh, and yet you also are a champion for creative entrepreneurship so how have you personally merged or deal with these creative and business mindset thing I think the the main thing to say about this is our world is changing really fast. And if if your mind isn't moving and opening and changing and shifting, then you are being left behind at some level. And, uh, you know, why aren't you (laughs) is is my big question. You know, why would you cling to a mindset that belongs to a time when there were far fewer opportunities and there was far less going on? So and I know in saying that it's so easy to say and talk about mindset and so difficult to actually dissolve a mindset or allow another one to to surface. And I suppose that's why uh, I felt it needed nine books, because it's very easy to, you know, there's a lot of surface talk in this space. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And then, you know, if it's, it's like Coleridge said, you know, there's no point in bidding me to do that. The fact that I can't do it is my problem. Mm. You know, it's how do you actually engage with what you don't know you don't know and with the kind of invisible and unconscious things that are coming between you and your own creative flow. That's essentially it. So it's very much in terms of my experience and my own personal experience and from from what I have seen, I think it's very mu- it's not so much about going after something or or making something happen that comes in certainly but there's also something that gets overlooked which is allowing things to happen taking stuff away and and, and creating a sort of um a soil in which the seed can kind of take take root so that's the that's what happens so for me personally that's very much about there's two kinds of sides to the creative thing on you know there's the julia cameron natalie goldberg brenda uland dorothy brand sort of soft feminine um side and then there's the Stephen Pressfield, uh, flow genome, um, extreme sports kind of flow state, masculine on that side. And for me, I, I think, and in my observations, about, it's not about either or, it's totally about both. It's, it's utterly about integrating those two sides and the create state and the conscious state hand over and back to each other all the way through the process. They are equal players. They actually create each other. You can't have one without the other. And anyone who's written a book has done that, whether they know they've done that or not. So um, that's just a little bit of, about what the books are about. But in terms, I would just say to authors in particular, this is a, an incredible time to be an author. You can earn your living from books and associated um, writing. You know, you can become a word merchant and make your living from that. And that is an incredibly wonderful place to be. But in order to do that, you're going to need to apply those creative skills to business as well, not just to making the book but actually to make the business and I find that's where when we see somebody in ally who takes off you know who begins to actually uh, have a success it's always a, a, those conditions come together in a way where they have begun to do that they found their way to make it work they found their business model and either consciously or by happy accident and they found the way that works for them in terms of their 
followers and their readers and how they attract them and how they go out after them and you know it's the balancing of those two sides coming together but you write too hugely about there it is behind you mindset book <laughs> <laughs> yeah well the mindset book is is, is is covers a lot of things but i think for me the creative and business um being in that state let's call it a state is that I really do schedule different times and I um, if people don't know you know I did write my first four books when I was still had a day job I built my website when I had a day job so I only left my job in 2011 and I started all this in like 2006 so for those years I did have that job and I but in the morning I would get up really early and that would be my creative hat and I would create the work you know whatever I was working on and then the afternoon evening which is my less creative time I was learning marketing learning business and people often seem to assume I have some kind of um, degree but my degrees are in theology and psychology so they are not in writing or publishing or book marketing um, I did work in a business for you know many years so I, I was skilled in that but it was a mining company and I implemented accounts payable so again not much in <laughs> not much to do with what we do so I think part of that to me is one is like specific tips for people schedule time for your creation and schedule separate time for the business and and because if you try and do both at the same time you can get a bit muddled and think oh but I don't want to write for business reasons and when you're in your business state it's like you're not being practical enough perhaps for some things so that's one big thing is I think to um to schedule different time and then you might you are very likely to be imbalanced in your level of um of of skill in these areas so for example you and i both know a lot of incredibly great writers with awards who have no clue about business or money and they are the ones who are starting to be quite lost in this in this new world um whereas you know i probably came in with more of a practical idea and then i ha i've had to learn a lot more of the creative side and let go of the other side so those are two big tips you know schedule the time and then learn understand that you have to upskill on the creative side and on the business side it, it, and learn these things and and you can learn them like you know you're always making amusing jokes about your lack of technology but look at you all like out there with your technological stuff <laughs> well it happens eventually but I really do have to sit with that a lot of things that come easy to you I find very challenging and and I feel dope in those places always but you have to kind of allow that to be I think that's one of the things about being creative is you are going to feel uncomfortable and I, I think that's where we see people who are really stuck, not the kind of stuck we were talking about at the top of the show, but, you know, where people actually are stuck and not moving and not creating, not 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 really writing even, you know, um, is that it's staying in the comfort zone. It's doing what you did on the last book or in the last time. The other thing is that this world shifts you know what works in terms of reaching your reader you know what worked a few years ago is not what's working now and and different things you know there are all sorts of things that marketeers don't talk about that work really well we see we see members doing things not by the book in any sort of way uh, pardon the pun and um you know doing really well with that so the main thing i think is to open up to what is possible and to stop feeling that words like marketing and I mean you were talking about people who are really great writers and perhaps award winners and perhaps in some cases carrying a sense that writing is in some way a more noble calling and a more you know setting up a very um, dualistic sort mm. of fight between those two sides of the job well you're just digging a hole for yourself to jump in and bury yourself because it's it just doesn't help you can actually decide how you're going to think about these things you can find your own language find if you don't like a particular word like branding or whatever find a word that means something that feels good and soulful to you but actually does mean something like that because you will need to do something like that that is your asset it is one of your major assets is essentially that people recognize what you stand for when you appear and you make that easy for them that's that's kind of what branding is or we can argue over the definitions but something like that will need to happen same with author platform if you don't like that word find another word for it but mm. do it 
do it. Don't just put a book out there and think that that's enough. It's or put loads and loads of books out there, none of which are selling. Mm. Take the time in, in our magazine at the moment and um, the one that's coming out in April. Karen Myers talks about taking a full year off her writing to upskill on her marketing and business side. She didn't fully intend to do that. She thought she'd write in the morning and, and do all the business stuff in the afternoon, but she realized actually in order to really get in here, it'd be quicker in the end if I stop writing for a while, mm. get the skills and then go back. And that's what she's done. And you know, maybe that's something that you might need to think about doing. So the point being anyway, that you need to actually open up to the possibility and you need to realize a lot of us fell into our creative business almost by default. We didn't necessarily, we don't think of ourselves necessarily as business people, we didn't choose it. We didn't go out and say, I'm gonna be a business person and I'm going to run an author business. It doesn't necessarily happen like that, you fall into it. But nonetheless, you have to admit to yourself, if you want to make an income from this, you are in business. And if you want to make an income from this, you have to sell something that somebody wants to buy. And I think that's incredibly good for us. I think mm. it's incredibly good for our writing as well. It forces us. I know what it was like when you just handed over the manuscript and there were some advantages to that. But all in all, creatively and commercially, um, this is a much more productive and much more creative experience, I think, and um, to be enjoyed. Mm. Well, it's interesting because I've, I've been doing quite a lot of NLP recently, which is neuro linguistic programming, which I don't like the term. But the whole point of it is it's about words and the power of language, which, of course, we all know about. And language is very important. And it's it's actually about telling a different story about you, about saying I am. And it's a bit, you know related to affirmation. So back when I was in that awful day job all those years ago my affirmation was I am creative I am an author and I never believed it and this was way before I'd ever written a book but I changed my mindset to think that I am creative and I am an author and thus I am <laughs> um, and so this is really important we are wordsmiths we are people who use language so if you you listening or whoever if you say i'm not a numbers person i'm not into marketing i don't like author platform i don't want to do this then you need to tell another story you need to change the language so you know it needs to be well how can you reframe it so you can... technology loves me yeah or technology or <laughs> i i love serving my audience like with the how to write non-fiction book i it was going nowhere until i went i love to serve my audience i actually love helping people get their books in the world therefore i love this book therefore how can i make it the best book and this reframing of you know i love this or i'm really happy when i when people enjoy my work and i get emails from people that say they love my book well that then gives you a reason why you're going to go and learn a bit about how to build an author platform or whatever so I think that's another message is think about the language and it's default language you might not even be noticing you're saying it so you have to and that's I've been doing this around the sort of healthy healthy author side and, and body image and all of this type of stuff and it's so interesting all the things that end up in our heads that we haven't examined the language around so that's my challenge to to people listening and the other thing I will say uh, is I mentioned Plato's chariot in our notes and this is a, a th something I've had in my head for many years because it, I feel like this all the time so Plato's chariot in your head imagine the uh, the Roman chariot where they had two horses um, pulling the chariot and the charioteer is is holding uh, is holding the reins and on one side there is a dark horse and the other side is a white horse and you have to have the two running together in order for your chariot to go really fast now I normally use this as my shadow side and my you know my more outgoing other side um, that I need them both and silence and whatever but you can also do it with creative and business you need the two together and if you have the two together then you will be able to be creatively fulfilled and have enough money that enables you to live the life that you want to live and both of those things are necessary so that's that's my metaphor Love it. It's absolutely brilliant. And it's absolutely right. And it's the same with, you know, when you when you have those two things, 
the, the power of the two of them together is much more than double power. It's like mm. something comes together and in, in the integration that gives you extra, extra power that you can't even imagine right now while you're sitting there thinking, I'm no good at business when, when you change. And the other thing I would really encourage people to change the language around is time. And mm. um, people feel, you know, even people who have moved into a sort of an abundant mindset around book production and money can still be have a real scarcity mentality around time and we're all so busy and you know I know people who are going and doing London Book Fair in 15 minute increments now (gasps) 15 minutes it takes you that long to walk from a floor to another floor it's just but the idea of a of a human interaction in couldn't possibly be meaningful or very productive except it's boom 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 gone you know um it's a scarcity mentality that creates that sort of of, of thing. And I, you hear a lot of indies talking about, you know, um, I've got the hardest boss I ever had since I started working for myself. I don't have any time. I don't have anything. I have to work the weekend. I think I haven't had a day off for three weeks, three months, three years, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so time is something to think about mm. um, as well as money when when you and just just observe I do as you know loads of stuff around money it's really interesting just for a week whenever you hear yourself talk about money mm. or time just listen to what you said what did I actually say there did I even mean it where did I hear this where did I learn this stuff you mm. know who, whose voice is that actually speaking through my mouth and I suppose that's the final thing because I think we must be running close to the end of time <laughs> we can always go on forever <laughs> yes exactly we can never stop once we start um what was the final thing <laughs> oh yes I remember it's about who you associate who the other minds that you're consuming as you go through your day and you know Facebook is actually comes up again in, in relation to this. I got one of those memes from a, an old school friend of mine about Facebook. Oh, everybody's talking about their calf and their dog and their blah, 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 blah. And I found myself kind of, because there's so much going on with Facebook at the moment and I'm really thinking about where I am in relation to it all. I found myself really responding to what was a very innocuous little kind of meme thing she had sent over and saying, well, actually, you know, on Facebook, I have, you know, meet amazing minds. I've been introduced to so many fabulous books. Books, uh, you know, to help me to create a business. Da, 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 da. And the point being, you know, she got cats and things because that's what she engaged with on Facebook. Mm. And Facebook for me was something entirely different. And so who's feeding it, you in, you know, what's coming out of your mouth around money, around time, around books, around publishing, around what you want to do with your life, your time, your money, your books, your publishing. And um, hang out with good people you know good stuff in good stuff out there we go right and if you want more good stuff in check out the self publishing advice conference.com <laughs> <laughs> where, where the, <laughs> very nice lead in um, where the, uh, the the stuff will be happening over London Book Fair and we will be back uh, for the May uh, chat in a month's time when we will be bringing you lots more news and updates and exciting topics so happy writing happy publishing happy business everyone absolutely <laughs> take care bye bye